If you have been stuck at 3.5 for years, you're thinking, oh man, what do I gotta do to get to a 4.0? This is the video for you because today I'm gonna show you five shots. You gotta start improving if you wanna move up to the big 4.0. Hey guys, my name is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching and I get asked this question all the time by so many of my students. I've been stuck at that 3.5 or I'm getting a 3.75 but I just can't get bumped up to 4.0. What do I need to do to get to the next level? So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. Also stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you and give you a free eight part training series that no matter what level you're stuck at, where it's 3.0, 3.5, 4.0, 4.5, what you need to do to get to that next level. So the first shot we're gonna really focus on right now is the serve. I call these the five big rocks of tennis. They're the five areas that people get stuck in that if they can just get over this hump, it usually pushes them to the next level, but especially at that 3-5, because I find a lot of people can get to a 3-0 to a 3-5 in a relative short amount of time, but they can get stuck at 3-5 for years, sometimes even decades. And the biggest, one of the biggest things, if not the biggest thing, is your second serve, okay? Because at a 3.5 level, you can still have that hammer or frying pan grip. You're fine with that. If you're a 3-5 and you can just get it in here and tap the ball and play. Sure, it's not the greatest second serve, but at 3-5, there's not a lot of players that are gonna make you pay for having a weak second serve. But at 4.0, think about it. Just look at your club and tell me if I'm wrong. You will see a ton of 3-5 players, second serve, psh, they're gonna put it in play. Then when you look at the 4-0 and the 4-5, you rarely see that. You might see it every once in a while on the 4-0 court, but they're probably not your, they're your strong 4-0s at the club. But the strong 4-0s, solid 4-0s, the 4-5s and 5-0 players, they all have that continental grip. So that's one thing that if you're gonna really want to move up to the 4-0 level, you have got to commit to switching to the continental grip so you can put spin on that second serve. Now I want you to think about why do we need the continental grip? Because we have got to put spin on our second serve. When you master that confidence in your spin serve, you can step up and accelerate under pressure and put the ball in play every time. And the spin serve I want you to focus on, you got two choices. You got the slice, you got the kick serve. And even if you're a righty, I think it's important, if you've never hit a spin serve before, to develop your slice serve first. And I want to tell you this for a number of reasons. Number one, if you want to develop a kick serve, it, it takes a lot of physicality. I think it's one of the hardest shots in tennis because you got to arch the back. You got to put the ball toss behind you and you got to really push up, brush up and kick out this way. That's very hard to do for people. Also, I think it uh, to really be effective and jump out of the strike zone, it requires a jump where if, if you're just learning this serve, for the most part, when you're learning something new too, you want to stay grounded. So you can even, your whole entire playing career, even to get to that 4-0, you can be on the ground and hit a nice slice serve in play that's going to be effective. I think that that second serve at 4-0 tennis is going to be fine. And you can then develop more and more confidence on it, swing faster and faster, and then eventually maybe develop a jump. And, and have that second serve be a real weapon. Plus you can use it so much for the first serve too. So I'm a big believer in the slice serve. You can move it all over the box. It's just not the out wide serve that you have. You got all kinds of options with the slice serve. So that's what I would really focus on to get to that next level. Okay, let's get to the second shot you're gonna need if you wanna go from the 3-5 to the 4-0 and play with the big boys and girls. Let's do this. Okay. The second shot you're gonna to need to improve to get to the 4-0 level is your return of serve, specifically for fast serves. And what you need to really do, there's two things you need to improve if you're gonna be playing with those 4-0 players. Now, at the 3-0 and 3-5 level, there's rarely somebody who's got just a massive serve. You're like, whoa, that was big, that's a real weapon. So your footwork returning serves doesn't really need to be that good or that specific. You can kind of stand here and you can kind of move your feet a lot and you can turn and you can hit and not too many people are gonna make you pay for that. But when you get to the 4-0 level, 
Now all of a sudden you're gonna be playing more players that have great spin serves where they can serve over 100 miles an hour. And if you're playing with those type of players that have fast serves or tricky serves with a spin, then you need very efficient footwork. You need to have return to serve footwork. And the thing about footwork, footwork isn't just moving fast or running far. Footwork is being very specific and efficient. And you really need that on your return to serve. So if you watch the pros when they return, they got a wide base. So you want to get as wide as comfortable and still feel strong. You don't want to go so wide that you feel out of balance or you start to feel pain and you don't want to be narrow because now you're not explosive. So you want to have a nice wide base. If you can get your legs just outside your shoulders, that's good. And then you got to sit down. I want you to get down and then it's all about the timing of the toss. When the toss goes up, don't split yet. Right as you see your opponent's hips start, to, you've got to kind of like picture the entire body, but really focus mostly on the ball. But you're feeling that energy start to crack and commit into the ball. When you see that, that's when you're going to split step. Now you can either do a step up hop like this. I recommend you practice it. Just don't watch this video and think you got it. Because every time I work with somebody right in front of me on the court and I show them the footwork, they mess this up. So practice this return to serve footwork without the volume being served. You want to come here, step up, be ready, and then it's all about your first move. You can also sometimes just do a straight hop up too. You don't always need to move forward. But I, I like the idea of attacking an offensive serve with your offense too and moving towards the ball. And then what you got to do is really develop a short backswing. And you, you want to keep your body open. The minute you turn, it's over. If somebody serves the ball fast and you move like this, boom, it's going to be by you. You're going to be hitting late and you're not going to have good returns. The more you can keep your body open to the court and get right here and hit nice, simple and efficient, then you can return a hundred, hundred mile an hour serve with interest. You can hit, you can take their pace and use it against them. So that's the second big rock is being able to return fast serves with more efficient footwork. Let's go to the third shot you're gonna need to move up and play with the 4-0 players. Okay, you've been watching my videos. You've heard me talk about the ultimate rally ball. And I don't care if you're playing singles or doubles, you want the ultimate rally ball. Because if you're back sometimes and you get in that cross-court rally, and that's gonna happen a lot in singles and doubles, that cross-court battle, if you don't have an ultimate rally ball, you're going to make unforced errors, you're gonna panic, you're gonna hit play low percentage tennis. Lots of bad things are gonna happen. You're gonna give up short balls too. So what the ultimate rally ball is, is I like, especially on the forehand side, we're just gonna talk about the forehand side today. The backhand's a little different, but on the forehand side today, the ultimate rally ball I want you to start developing is to get comfortable with the idea of spin, specifically top spin and also combining the top spin with height. Being able to take that ball and hit it high, well, that wasn't very good. See, that's the opposite of the ultimate rally ball. That was a short ball, and now they're coming in, and now both people are attacking me, and I gotta pass them. So that is the anti-ultimate rally ball. So I need more height, more spin. Now there's the ultimate rally ball, especially when I'm playing doubles. You see that shot? See that ball went nice and high and deep with spin? You want to have that reliable to where you can make that. You feel like you can make that once you get warmed up a hundred times in a row. That's what the ultimate rally ball is. It's a ball that's consistent, that doesn't get you hurt. And when you can just do that, now all of a sudden what happens is your opponents start to make non-forced errors. They start to give you the short ball. They start to hit the ball right to your partner so they can poach and put the ball away. So work on your ultimate rally ball. And that's definitely going to have the phone ringing from your 4-0 friends who are going to say, hey, why don't you come play with us today? All right, let's go to number four. Now, guys, before we go into tip number four, look at that face. He's a little sad right now because you've been watching this video and you still haven't given it a like. I mean, if you're watching this video, see how, oh, he really got sad. If you're watching this video and haven't liked and you haven't subscribed especially, right? If you want the best tennis tips out there, plus to see more of my buddy B2, subscribe right now and let's go into tip number four. Okay guys, big rock, number four. What we need to do to get from a 3-5 to a 4-0 level is we need to start mastering this mid court, okay? And a lot of people think 
that the way to master the midcourt is when you see that nice juicy sitter that you need to step up and you need to become Roger Fetter or Serena Williams and come up here and just punish that short ball away. Guess what I just did with that shot? I missed it, okay? Even I watched a video with Venus Williams and she says she hates short balls, that it takes so much work, so much practice. They're so easy to miss, okay? And these are machines. These are players that are machines and they do this for a living and they're the best in the world at what they do. And even they go, man, I need to work a lot on short balls. I watched Emma Raducanu, okay, US Open champ a couple years ago. I watched her in Cincinnati. She practiced a short ball for an hour and a half. So here's the thing. If you're gonna come up and crush a short ball, you have got to do something I call a hop, hop, and hit rhythm. I'm gonna show you from the side what it looks like. And this is the same exact footwork as I'll show you that Emma was doing, that all the pros do if you wanna come up and crush this ball. Okay, so here I am. I see the short ball. What I don't wanna do is get stuck and gaze at it and be still and then swing and arm it. I wanna move up to it in a rhythm. I wanna see it and I wanna get in a hop, hop, hit rhythm. See, I kinda of skipped through that. Again, let me show you. This is footwork you gotta practice. Hop, hop, hit rhythm. And you just do this over and over again. You're back here, you see the ball, you move up, hop, hop, hit. That's what you gotta get good at if you wanna come up and start crushing these short balls. But even more effective, more efficient, easier to execute in the matches is something I call a toenail biter slice approach shot, okay? This a lot of times is gonna be more effective than coming up and pretending you're Roger Federer or Serena Williams is coming here and hitting that nice little short shot. You see how I just hit that ball right at the camera? Do you see how that ball skidded and stayed low? All right, now think about this. The ball's coming and you got to pass. Look at that, that's not even coming off the ground, okay? Imagine that. So you hit that shot, guys. What's your opponent going to have to do? Your opponent, guess what they're going to have to do? They're going to have to do what? They're going to have to get down here to pass you, and they're going to be forced to hit up. They're going to be forced to hit up. That's what you want, okay? That's better, don't you think? Don't you think that's better than hitting a Roger Federer approach shot, especially if you're a doubles player? Now, come on, work on that, and we'll get to tip number five. Okay, last but not least, big rock number five. We're up here at the net. Now, we can't hide anymore. You're going to play 4-0. People are going to be really good. They're going to start attacking you, especially when your partner's serving there. If they smell that you're the weak link, they're going to come after you. So, again, just like we started on the serve, no longer can you get away with these volleys. You can maybe do that at 3-5 and win a lot of matches. You ain't doing that at 4-0. Yeah, no, you're not doing that at 4-0. You got to get that continental grip. You got to be efficient. You got to be able to volley like a pro, okay? So this is when you got to do a couple things. Number one, get rid of this grip. Get rid of it, throw it in the trash. Get the continental grip, okay? Maybe start to work on, now you can still have great volleys with a two-hander, but I think it's even better. This is the, maybe the time, the year, that you start to develop a really nice one-handed volley, okay? And then no swinging anymore. No swinging, no fencing. You got to come here, and you got to be a surgeon. You don't need to volley the ball hard. That's what people think. To put the ball away at the net, I got to put it away. No, you just got to be a surgeon. It's like, oh, there it goes. The alley's open, there's my chance. Boom, you got to volley that ball in the alley. If you find someone's feet, you got to put it right at their feet in the way. You can't be off target. Otherwise, the ball keeps coming back for you and your partner. You get lobbed and all that kind of stuff, which means, leads me to my last thing. The next thing you need to, to work on when you're at the net is you got to start putting overheads away. You got to put your volleys in their overheads away if you want to get to the 4.0 level and those people call you and ask you to play. Okay, guys. So there you go. There you go. There's your five big rocks. And I've got an eight part free training series that's all about getting to the next level. So make sure you click up here in the card section or go down in the description box and you sign up because if you want this year to be your best year ever on court, then I will be your personal coach. You can even send me videos. We can talk back and forth. It's a lot of fun, this, this program I have to get people to the next level. It's amazing. So make sure that you go there, you sign up. It's free, it's free, why wouldn't you do it? And go down in the description box, sign up for your free eight-part series training, and then if it sounds good to you and you're ready to go to the next level, 
then you definitely need to be joining Next Level University. All right, the next thing you need to do is subscribe to this channel because we are going to be giving you so much amazing content on how you can achieve all of this. So if you want more lessons on how to achieve that slice serve that skids off the court, if you want more lessons on how to improve your volley and how to improve topspin, make sure you subscribe to my channel right now because this is going to be our best year ever. So we'll see you guys on the next video. Watch this one too. This is a really good one up here. Make sure you watch that next.